Backtracks time is here again. Let's talk about how long it's been since our favorite albums from way back when. Backtracks time is here again. Greetings one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, Backtracks time is here again. It is time for my monthly roundup of notable album anniversaries, divisible by five, as well as at least one Spotlight album. And yes, this month, again, there will be two Spotlight albums. Uh, yes, I've been so busy with uh, other stuff on my channel that's in various stages of development that I almost forgot to do a Backtracks this month. Shame on me, right? But anyway, let's go ahead, uh, before the month of May is over, let's go ahead and take a look at what albums are celebrating anniversaries for the month of May 2019. Back in May of 1959, Judy Garland released The Letter. Arranged by Gordon Jenkins, this concept album featured actor John Ireland reading the titular letter between Garland's songs. A copy of this letter was included in an envelope pasted to the cover on some copies of the album. Singles included Red Balloon, The Worst Kind of Man, and That's All There Is, There Isn't Any More. Also released 60 years ago this month, and also arranged by Gordon Jenkins, was Louis Armstrong's album Satchmo in Style. The tracks were recorded between 1949 and 1954. The album, though, is not considered a highlight of his career, as his signature trumpet playing is not prominent. Songs on the album included Blueberry Hill, which was later made famous by Fats Domino, That Lucky Old Son, and the Irving Berlin tune You're Just in Love. Fifty-five years ago this month, Johnny Cash released his 19th album, I Walk the Line. It reached number 53 on the Billboard Pop Albums chart and number one on the country charts. The single Understand Your Man hit number one on the country singles chart and Bad News reached the top ten. The album also features re-recordings of some of his biggest hits including Folsom Prison Blues, Big River, Hey Porter, and the title track. Also released in May of 1964 was Mary Wells Sings My Guy, her fourth and final studio album for the Motown label. Side One consists of contemporary R&B and soul hits such as the singles Whisper Your Love to Me Boy by Holland Does Your Holland and the Smokey Robinson penned title track. And Side Two is comprised of pop standards such as At Last, which was a hit for Etta James four years earlier, and the Al Dubin and Harry Warren classic I Only Have Eyes for You. Happy 50th anniversary this month to Sly and the Family Stone's fourth album, Stand. It was the band's most successful album and earned a gold certification by the end of the year. It peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Pop Albums chart and number 3 on the Top R&B Albums chart. Single Everyday People topped the Billboard Pop and R&B Singles charts, and I Want to Take You Higher and the title track both hit the top 40 on both charts. Rolling Stone ranked the album number 118 on their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, and in 2015 the album was deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant by the Library of Congress and included in the National Recording Registry. Also released in May of 1969 was The Fifth Dimension's fourth album, The Age of Aquarius. It peaked at number two on the Billboard Pop Albums chart and earned a Grammy nomination for Album of the Year. The hit single medley of Aquarius and Let the Sun Shine In reached number one on the Billboard Pop Singles and Adult Contemporary charts and won two Grammys, including Record of the Year. Follow-up single Wedding Bell Blues also hit number one on both charts. The album also includes the group's renditions of Let It Be Me, made famous by the Everly Brothers, and the Cream single Sunshine of Your Love. In May of 1974 came Olivia Newton-John's album If You Love Me, Let Me Know. Released only in the U.S. and Canada, it was her second North American album and her fourth release overall. It consists almost entirely of tracks previously issued on her Australian and European albums. It was her first album to top the Billboard 200, and it also topped the Billboard Country Albums chart. The title track, the only new track on the album, hit number one in Canada and number two in the U.S. and Australia. I Honestly Love You, which was released earlier in the year on her UK album Long Live Love, topped the charts in the US, Australia, Canada, and Sweden, and earned Newton-John Grammys for Record of the Year and Female Pop Vocal Performance, and it also became her signature song. Also released 45 years ago this month was Ray Stevens' 11th album, Boogity Boogity. It marked his return to the comedy and novelty genres after a five-year foray into pop, country, and gospel. It includes previously released tracks such as Freddie Feelgood and his funky little five-piece band and Bridget the Midget, Queen of the Blues, as well as fresh singles such as Moonlight Special and perhaps his biggest hit ever, The Streak, which reached number one in Canada, the UK, and New Zealand and spent three weeks at number one on the Billboard 200. 
Four decades ago this month, the Patti Smith Group released their fourth album, Wave. It was produced by Todd Rundgren, and it reached number 18 on the Billboard 200 chart and number 41 on the UK Albums chart. Its first single, Frederick, was a love song by Patti Smith for her soon-to-be husband, Fred Smith, of the band MC5, and it charted at number 90 on the Billboard Hot 100. Second single, Dancing Barefoot, is included on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time, and has been covered by numerous artists including U2, Simple Minds, and actress-comedian-singer Leah Delaria. The title track, incidentally, was a tribute to Pope John Paul I, whose reign of just 34 days as Pope happened to coincide with the album's recording sessions. Also released in May of 1979 was Electric Light Orchestra's eighth album, Discovery. It was their first UK album to hit number one, where it debuted and stayed for five weeks. It also topped the album's charts in Australia and Norway, and was a top ten album in nine other countries, peaking at number five in the US, where it went double platinum. The album has the distinction of being the first to generate four top ten singles in the UK, and yes, according to Wikipedia, even the Beatles didn't do that. Singles Shine a Little Love and Don't Bring Me Down also reached the top 10 in the U.S., and singles Confusion and Last Train to London sneaked into the top 40 in the U.S. Those two songs, incidentally, were both released as a double A-side single in the U.K. Celebrating its 35th anniversary this month is Chicago's 14th album, Chicago 17. It would take too long to explain the math, trust me. It was the last album to feature the vocals and bass of founding member Peter Cetera, it was the biggest selling album of the band's career. It hit number four on the Billboard 200 and was certified six times platinum. The album received three Grammy Awards, including Producer of the Year for David Foster and Best Engineered Recording Non-Classical for Humberto Gatica. The single Hard Habit to Break won the Grammy for Best Instrumental Arrangement Accompanying Vocals and was nominated for three more Grammys, including Record of the Year. That single and You're the Inspiration both hit number three on the Billboard Hot 100, and Stay the Night and Along Comes a Woman made the top 20. Also released in May of 1984 was Private Dancer, Tina Turner's fifth solo album and her debut on the Capitol label. It remains her best-selling album in North America and currently enjoys five times platinum status in the U.S., as well as seven times platinum certification in Canada and multi-platinum standings in the U.K. and Australia. Seven singles were released from the album, including her cover of Al Green's Let's Stay Together, which peaked at number 26 on the charts, Better Be Good To Me and the title track, which both went top 10, and What's Love Got To Do With It, her only U.S. Billboard Hot 100 number one thus far. That single also hit number one in Australia and Canada, and, won t and went top 10 in 10 other countries. What's Love Got To Do With It won three Grammy Awards, Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. May of 1989 saw the release of Reba McIntyre's 16th album, Sweet 16. It debuted at number 17, almost got it, on the Billboard Country Albums chart, but it eventually peaked at number one, staying at the top for 13 weeks. It sold half a million copies in its first nine weeks, and within four years was certified platinum. The album produced four top ten country singles, including Kathy's Clown, a cover of the Everly Brothers hit, as well as Till Love Comes Again, Little Girl, and Walk On. Steve Warriner, Patti Loveless, and Vince Gill all contributed background vocals to the album. Also released 30 years ago this month was Disintegration, the eighth album by The Cure. It was their most successful release, having sold 3 million copies worldwide. It peaked at number 12 in the U.S., eventually going double platinum, and it was a top 10 album in Australia, New Zealand, and most of Europe. Rolling Stone includes it on their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. The single Lullaby reached the top five in the UK, Austria, Germany, Ireland, and Spain, and the single Love Song went top five in the US and top 20 in the UK and Ireland. A quarter of a century ago, Huey Lewis and the News released Four Chords and Several Years Ago. It was their seventh album and the last to feature bassist Mario Cipollina. This album saw the band covering rhythm and blues and early rock and roll songs such as Fats Domino's Blue Monday, one of my favorites, Otis Redding's You Left the Water Running, Grand Funk Railroad's Some Kind of Wonderful, and Ernie K. Doe's Mother-in-Law, which features Dr. John on guest vocals. And that rendition of that song is probably my favorite track on this album. This is a really fun, cool album, especially if you kind of like, uh, uh, you know, the early days of rock and roll and rhythm and blues recordings from that era. Fantastic album. A bit of a different thing from Huey Lewis and the News, but still outstanding. Also released in May of 1994 was Weezer's debut album. Bet you can't guess what it was called. Anyway, produced by Rick Ocasek, it went top 10 in Canada and New Zealand and peaked at number 16 on the Billboard 200. 
It's sold 3 million copies so far in the US and has been certified triple platinum within four years of release. Rolling Stone placed it on their lists of the 500 greatest albums of all time and the 100 best debut albums of all time. All three singles, Undone the Sweater Song, Buddy Holly, and Say It Ain't So, hit the top 10 of the Billboard Modern Rock Tracks chart and the top 40 of the UK singles charts. 20 years ago this month saw the release of Millennium, the Backstreet Boys' second album in the US and third album internationally. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and held the spot for 10 non-consecutive weeks out of 93 weeks on the chart. It broke sales records, selling nearly half a million copies in just its first day of release, over 1.1 million in its first week, and by the end of the year it had sold over 9 million copies. It currently sits within the top 25 best-selling albums of all time in the U.S., and it received nominations for two Grammys, Album of the Year and Best Pop Vocal Album. Internationally, it topped the charts in over 15 countries and enjoys multi-platinum status in nine countries. Lead-off single, I Want It That Way, hit number one in seven countries, except the U.S., where it peaked at just number six, and it received Grammy nomination for Record of the Year. Other singles include Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely, which earned a Grammy nomination for Best Pop Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals, as well as Larger Than Life and The One. That's probably my favorite song on the album. Also released in May of 1999 was Ricky Martin's self-titled album. It was his first English language album, his third release in the U.S., and his fifth overall. It peaked at number one in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and four other countries, and went top ten in 12 additional countries. It's been certified seven times platinum in the U.S. and multi-platinum in five other countries. It was the third best-selling album of the year in the U.S. Livin' La Vida Loca was number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for five weeks and topped the Canadian singles charts for eight weeks, as well as topping the UK chart for three weeks. It hit number one in five other countries. She's All I Ever Had reached number two in the US, and Shake Your Bonbon went top 40. In May of 2004, Keen released their debut album, Hopes and Fears. It topped the album's chart in the UK and was the second best-selling album of the year there, eventually earning a nine times platinum certification by the BPI. It was a top 10 album in five other countries, including France, Ireland, and Norway. In the US, however, it peaked at just number 45 on the Billboard 200 and holds a gold certification. None of the singles reached the top 40 in the US, but Everybody's Changing and Somewhere Only We Know reached the top five in the UK, and This Is The Last Time and Bed Shaped went top 20. Another debut album released 15 years ago this month was Here For The Party by Gretchen Wilson. It peaked at number two on the Billboard 200 and number one on the Billboard Country Albums chart. It was the fifth best-selling album of the year in the States, eventually earning a five times platinum certification. It reached number seven on the Swedish charts, number four on the Norwegian charts, and number 21 in Australia. The album garnered Gretchen Wilson a Grammy nomination for Best New Artist and Best Country Album. The hit single Redneck Woman topped the country singles charts and went top 40 on the Billboard Hot 100. It also nabbed a Grammy nomination for Best Country Song and a win for Best Female Country Vocal Performance. Follow-up singles Here for the Party and When I Think About Cheatin' went top 5 on the country singles charts and top 40 on the Billboard Hot 100. Happy 10th anniversary this month, time for a little self-indulgence here, to Groove, the fifth album by Philippine R&B singer Billy Crawford. This is a cover album of classic pop, soul, and R&B hits of the 70s and 80s, such as Human Nature and Rock With You, both by Michael Jackson, How Sweet It Is by James Taylor, Lovely Day by Bill Withers, and Let's Groove by Earth, Wind, and Fire. I discovered this guy, I actually don't remember how I discovered him, probably in the dollar section of a CD store. Uh, yeah, he's put out five albums. This is his most recent one, and he's just really good. I intend on doing a discography about him sometime in the future. But yeah, this is a great album. He does a fantastic job on these old uh, pop and soul and R&B hits. Uh, he's just kind of made for this kind of stuff. So yeah, if you ever happen happened upon this album, give it a try, especially if you like cover albums and if you like that kind of material from the uh, 70s and 80s. Good album. But anyway, back to the big anniversary albums here. Also released in May of 2009 was 21st Century Breakdown, Green Day's eighth album. It was their second rock opera after the 2004 hit American Idiot. Produced by Butch Vig, it won the Grammy for Best Rock Album. It topped the charts in over 15 countries, including the US, the UK, Canada, New Zealand, Japan, Norway, and France. And it went top 10 basically everywhere else. Uh, it's earned various levels of platinum certification in over a dozen countries. 
It's a somewhat loose narrative is divided into three acts and touches on personal, societal, and social problems prevalent in early 21st century America. Singles Know Your Enemy and 21 Guns narrowly missed the Billboard Hot 100, but landed in the top five of the Billboard Alternative Songs chart. And as a very interesting trivia note, Walmart asked the band to produce a censored version of the album so that they could sell it in their stores, and the band refused, saying, quote, there's nothing dirty about our album. Good for them. And by the way, over at The Quotable Shyok, which is a channel that I really enjoy watching, uh, he teamed up with Noah from SMEB Reviews and did a joint review of the album for its 10th anniversary uh, just recently. So I will put a link to that review in my description below, and the links to both Shyok's channel and SMEB Reviews are in my description below uh, all the time. So check out both of their channels and check out that review. Uh, great content on both of their channels. In May of 2014, Sam Smith released his debut album, In the Lonely Hour. It topped the album charts in six countries, including Australia, the UK, and South Africa. It was a huge hit in New Zealand, spending eight non-consecutive weeks at number one, and 68 non-consecutive weeks in the top ten. It's also New Zealand's number five all-time best charting album. It peaked at number two in the US and Canada, eventually going double platinum in both countries, and it went top ten in 11 other countries. It's the only 2014 album to sell one million copies in both the UK and the US. The album received six Grammy nominations, including Album of the Year, and it won four, including Best Pop Vocal Album. The Dark Child version of the smash hit single Stay With Me won Song of the Year and Record of the Year Grammys. The single version of Stay With Me hit number one in ten countries, including the US and the UK, and it went top ten in Japan, Australia, and most of Europe. Other singles, Money on My Mind, I'm Not the Only One, and Like I Can, all reached the top ten in the UK. Also released five years ago this month was Forget the World, the debut album by Dutch electro house DJ Afrojack. It reached number 32 on the Billboard 200 and number 2 on the Billboard Dance and Electronic Albums chart. As Your Friend, featuring Chris Brown, was technically the first single, but it's only available on the deluxe version of the album. It reached number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 21 in the UK. Follow-up single, The Spark, featuring Spree Wilson, edged into the bottom slot of the Billboard Hot 100 in the US, but hit number 17 in the UK. Singer Rabel is featured on two songs, including the single Ten Feet Tall. Other featured vocalists include Snoop Dogg, Neon Trees frontman Tyler Glenn, Wiz Khalifa, and Matthew Coma. And at last, we arrive once again at the Spotlight albums for this month. Both albums, incidentally, are 50 years old this month, both released in May of 1969, First one I'll share with you is the debut album by Crosby, Stills & Nash. Uh, yes, we all know who they are, uh, but I had actually never listened to this album before. And this one, actually, I inherited from my sister and brother-in-law's collection, so I didn't have to actually buy it this month. So, yes, it's uh, if you know Crosby, Stills & Nash's big hits, you kind of know what to expect from this album. They're very much in the folk rock Americana type genre, I guess, you know, before it was called Americana, really. But yeah, it's, this is a very, very good album, an excellent debut. Uh, they they showed promise early on. Yeah, this is I think this is the original issue of the album. It's got a nice gatefold here. Uh, but don't get too excited because the record itself is not in terribly great condition. It plays and doesn't skip, but yeah, it's it, it's not pretty to look at. But uh, yeah, this is a great album. It uh, it won the Grammy for Best New Artist uh, for Crosby, Stills and Nash, in, incidentally, which is not surprising as good as this is. But uh, yeah, an, uh, an inter interesting trivia note, they shot the album cover at an abandoned house in West Hollywood uh, with the band members actually in reverse order. So this is Crosby, Stills & Nash. Uh, after they decided on the name for the band, uh, you know, and they realized that they were out of order, they went back to sh reshoot the cover, but the, al the house had already been demolished. So that's an interesting trivia note for you. But uh, yeah, as for the album, it's it's fantastic. I mean... Everybody knows, pretty much everybody knows, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes and Marrakesh Express. Uh, but that's just the beginning of the good tracks on this album. Pre-Road Downs, uh, the last track on side one. I really enjoyed that one. That really caught my ear. Uh, Helplessly Hoping was another really, really good one I enjoyed. But yeah, I, I like the entire album. What can I say? This is fantastic. And sorry, I don't have a whole lot more to say about this album, but it's it's kind of... You know, it's really good. It's just, it's one of those albums that you don't really need to say a lot about. It's just, it's great to listen to. It's, you know, it's one of those albums that doesn't wow you, 
with its with its greatness. It's it's its greatness is subtle. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, fantastic, and I will be eternally grateful to my sister and my brother-in-law for uh, bestowing that album on me. But anyway, yes, I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm going to try and... Well, I don't want to rush through this uh, album review because I want to give it its due because uh, it was a very, very good album. I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to say about it, honestly, because I'm still kind of absorbing it. But it's a very, very good album. I'm really glad I picked it up. And it's an album that just has my name all over it, literally. Uh, it's Tommy by The Who. Uh, yes, it's their... You know, one of their big albums, uh, double album rock opera magnum opus, if you will. Um, yeah, it's it's very, very good. Uh, th this is actually not the original release. This is on MCA. The original release was on DECA. But uh, yeah, I, I've mentioned before, or at least I think I've mentioned before, how it takes a lot to get me into rock operas, concept albums. Uh, well, prog rock is kind of in the, sort of the same vein where, you know, you kind of have to listen to the whole thing. It's got kind of a narrative through it that, you know, it, for some reason with music, it's a little difficult for me to maintain my attention span for an entire album. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know what it is. But anyway, uh, enough of that. On to the album itself. I really, really enjoyed it, as I said. I'm going to give it repeated listens. I'm going to keep on listening to it. Uh, I enjoyed the second half of it uh, more than the first half, I think. Of course, everybody knows Pinball Wizard. That's a big hit single. Uh, another one, uh, I'm Free, was another hit single. I really enjoyed that song. And uh, uh, what was it? Go to the Mirror Boy. I think that was one that I really enjoyed. Uh, I think my light is uh, starting to fade. Yeah, it's, it's been on for a while. So sorry about the lack of light here, but I'll finish up quickly here. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was kind of surprised at how much of the first half of the album was instrumental. I just, for some reason, expected it to be all vocal, but uh, because of the Who. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I am not sorry in the least that I picked it up. As I said, it will be undergoing repeated listens by me. Um, will I get more of the Who's discography? I'm not totally sure. Uh, I'm probably a little bit more liable to get more of Crosby, Stills, and Nash's discography in the future. But yeah, I cannot go wrong with either of these two albums. I do not regret, regret having either in my discography, in my uh, library, excuse me. So yeah, excellent choices for albums. So yes, I hope you enjoyed Backtracks for May of 2019, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. And also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.